Good morning. Welcome to Leon County today with Sheriff Walt McNeil and Sheriff. Uh, today we've got a topic I think everyone can take a part in here. You know, when we started our all in initiative, it was all about everyone in the community having some stake and keeping our community safe. Neighborhoods are a big part of that. Absolutely. It's still all about everybody pitching in where we are, where we where we, anywhere we can get into the to the fray of dealing with our crime issues. We need every citizen engaged. And quite honestly, neighborhoods are the key. I mean, one of the things we talked about, I, I'll digress here a minute and talk about 9-11. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things we talked about then was the Al-Qaeda cookbook simply said that Americans can be penetrated because we go in our neighborhoods and we don't know our, our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And they simply said, that all we've got to do is get into those communities. We can be anonymous and nobody will ever ask a question about us. So that's what we're asking our citizens to do, to never be anonymous, never allow our communities, our neighborhoods, to have citizens who live there that we aren't in contact with. Right. That's where the see something, say something actually came from. If you right. see something going on, neighbors, quite honestly, being neighborly, is, is trying to meet your neighbor and find out you know, who you are and how can we help. Uh, it's all about all, all of us working together. Right, you know, somewhere down the road, the nosy neighbor got a bad rap, but you actually <laughs> want the nosy neighbor, right? Absolutely. <laughs> when, when we have, uh, there's, I live in a little small, small neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We've only had about four or five people move in in the 25, 30 years we've been there. But uh, each time somebody moved in a neighbor, neighborhood, my wife and I, we get a bottle of wine and we go yes. next door and say, we introduce ourselves, welcome to the neighborhood, here's a bottle of wine, and we start a conversation. Right. That's what it's all about. It is. We do bake goods in our neighborhood. That's our <laughs> thing. We, we take over a loaf of something, but that's what it's all about. It's really knowing the people. So when something is not quite right, people recognize that's it. That's absolutely it. I mean, this is all about people caring about each other. That is the thing that's often missed in our community and our, our, our society right now is we get in our own little silos and we think that that's what exists, but there are much, much more going on yeah. and so much diversity out there that we can all learn from and appreciate. And that's Absolutely. what I love about uh, our community here in Leon County. Yeah, we're talking Neighborhood Crime Watch today and there's a lot to unpack. Absolutely. All right, so be sure to stick around. We're going to tell you all the benefits of having a Neighborhood Crime Watch and also take a look at a new part to that campaign. But first, let's check in with Jimmy Goodman with our Crime Tip Tuesday. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jimmy Goodman with the Leon County Sheriff's Office and this is your Crime Tip Tuesday. How to protect yourself when walking alone. Time's changing again. A lot of people are waking up early in the morning to get their exercise before they go to work. Here's a few tips to make sure you're safe. Avoid the dark, vacant, and deserted areas and use well-lit, well-traveled routes. Avoid the dark hours if you can. Always carry a flashlight with you and your cell phone. Dress in reflective clothing and comfortable shoes which will not hamper movement. If you think you're in trouble, Move away from that person or that threat if possible. Join any group of people nearby. If they're across the street or in front of you, increase your pace. Have a great week. Be safe out there. Welcome back. Joining me now is LCSO Crime Prevention Practitioner, Jimmy Goodman. Jimmy, there are some misconceptions out there about neighborhood watch uh, programs, neighborhood crime. Talk about uh, what is a neighborhood watch all about? The Neighborhood Crime Watch is a collective of neighbors that have the same goals. They want to keep their community safe, they want to protect life, and they want to protect property. And a lot of that is just by keeping your ear to the ground and keeping your eyes wide open to strange things that you know or that your gut is telling you that is not right. Yeah, I love the fact keeping your eyes open and paying attention. Now, what does a neighborhood have to do uh, to become an official LCSO neighborhood watch? So first we ask them to go to their uh, constituents and their neighbors and have a meeting and say, look, are y'all interested in this? Because like you asked a few minutes ago, there was a time where neighborhood crime watch was mis perceived as a bad thing. Um, we do not expect you to go out and enforce laws. We do not expect you to go out and challenge people like that. What we want you to do is to see something, say something, and to call us, and we will go out and gladly vet those uh, incidents to make sure to ensure that things are on the up and up. So when we ask them to go to their neighbors and ask if they're interested, they report back to us and say, yes, we are interested. And we will come in, we'll do a presentation, and we will ask them to provide what we call block captains. We take the neighborhoods and somewhat kind of dissect them into small pieces of the pie. Okay. 
And um, in doing that, you need a motivated captain. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. You have to have that person. And then you have to have those block captains that are getting the information from that neighborhood crime watch captain to put out into the community for things to watch for and things to do. And after that, they report back to us. We'll come out, we'll have the big full meeting. We uh, invite them uh, every month to a monthly meeting. And we'll come out and, and put some signs up so people are aware that this neighborhood's protected. Now, you, you mentioned a couple of things there, but specifically the uh, monthly meetings. What's involved in those monthly meetings? Every month, we, uh, we call all of the Neighborhood Crime Watch captains on, and what we have been doing is Zoom, and we found that that has been very uh, positive because so many people are so busy in their lives that they can tune in immediately, whether they're sitting at their desk at the end of their day or they're sitting at home while dinner's cooking. And we provide them with some of the most up-to-date, latest crime trends, uh, crime tips on what to do and how to avoid it. We also do safety tips on whether it's travel or whether it's uh, Christmas shopping, whatever it is to keep you, you know, uh, in the know. And we ask them to take that information and, and give it to their block captains. Jimmy, I, it is so important uh, from my perspective that uh, the neighbors, you talked about the block captains, so what is it that each one of the persons in those neighborhoods, what's so important that uh, in terms of their coming together and sharing information? Your neighbors are your best line of defense, period. We can't be everywhere all the time. They're your eyes, they're your ears, they care, they want to make sure that you're okay. Um, those people put together create a force just like ours. We, uh, we protect them, they protect themselves too. And we want to continue to thrive in that type of environment and encourage it because if you know your neighbor, then you care for your neighbor. And that concern is what is going to protect their property and maybe even their lives. Wow. I mean, I, I am always uh, thrilled when I go out to our neighborhood watch programs and I see the relationships. Real quickly, in about 30 seconds, Explain uh, when we have the uh, uh, septet, how do we apply that in the neighborhood? What we do is we go out and we look for things that common people may not be able to see. That's crime prevention through environmental design. It is, design. and what that does is it shows deficiencies most of the time and things to improve upon. We'll hit the positives, but a lot of it is uh, whether it's uh, hidden dangers, uh, things that prevent people from seeing uh, what they should be seeing, um, things like that. So we'll, we'll be glad to come out and do a survey. Well, hold that thought, Jimmy. Uh, coming up next, how your neighborhood can get upgraded to these crime watch signs. Stay tuned. back with LCSO Crime Prevention Practitioner Jimmy Goodman talking about our Neighborhood Crime Watch program. Jimmy, we just saw a video on the commercial break previewing a new LCSO media campaign. Tell us about that campaign. I'm really excited about this campaign because we are trying to get our neighborhoods back involved with us. You said earlier, people look at law enforcement and say, what are we doing about crime? I always look back at them and say, what are you doing to help us? Right. It's a yeah, partnership because we are just one cog in this wheel and we all live in this community. So we have a very vested interest in the safety of this community. I have a, a son that's young and is going through school here. So with this, this campaign that we're doing is we're challenging people to get back reengaged 
get back in life and get back looking and, and reporting stuff that needs to be told to us so we can help their communities. You know, we're talking to a lot of citizens out there about uh, being active on Nextdoor, that, that app out there. Uh, how is that app, uh, Nextdoor, helpful to us in, in law enforcement? The Nextdoor app is awesome because, first off, it reaches our entire community if, they're, uh, if they've applied for it. We can disseminate information immediately as to what's going on. You know, a lot of people are always very inquisitive. What's that law enforcement presence doing over here? What are they doing over there? Or if we need to tell them something about a road closure because of a bad traffic crash. Um, the biggest thing about Nextdoor is it is not a self-reporting or a, a reporting thing. If you see something, it's great that you want to post it on social media, but if you don't call us to go <laughs> right, and look yeah. at it or find out what's going on, then it's way late after the fact. We don't sit around you know, all day long waiting on our next door app to, uh, to ding. However, um, it is a great platform and we really enjoy it because it gets people engaged and they do provide us with some information. Thank you, Jimmy. You know, just before the pandemic, uh, we rolled out a new initiative with the new signs for a neighborhood uh, uh, watch. How is that going and, and what's the process of getting one, getting one of the signs? So with COVID, things slowed down a lot and a lot of people weren't meeting in person. So a lot of our crime watches have kind of become a, somewhat dormant. So this is something that we're trying to jump back in and say, look, you know, we have a brand new shiny sign that is really, uh, really well put together and very visible that we would love to come out and replace your old sign. But to do that, we want you to contact us and to let us know that you're still active and be a part of our, our meetings monthly so we can get that information out there. It's not just we're going to take the old signs down and put some new signs up. We need that involvement from those neighborhoods. So the best way that they can get a hold of us, they can email us, and that's lcsocpu at leoncountyfl.gov. And they can say, hey, we're neighborhood A and we're still active or we've kind of dried up a little bit and we need some motivation. Would you come back out and speak to us? And we were more than willing to come out there and, and take care of that. And when they get active, they get that new sign. I, I am really excited about uh, what you guys are doing in, in our crime prevention unit. Uh, I, I tell you, it's making a difference and can make a bigger difference. So what can uh, people learn? How, how can they learn more about our neighborhood watch programs? Uh, again, if they'll reach out to us at that uh, email address and ask us, can we meet with them? We will come and sit down with them and we will explain everything on, on what to watch, what to look for, what to do and what not to do. Because like I said, you know, Neighborhood Crime Watch kind of got that bad rap for a little while that, uh, that there were some vigilanteism and some other things going on. This is a watch listen report that's what we're looking for that that type of of activity yeah jimmy just before the break i i said we'd come back to the uh, septet crime prevention through environmental design talk about that in more detail so crime prevention through environmental design is taking things like we all like our privacy so everybody wants to erect a 10 foot tall privacy fence well that prevents anybody from seeing someone maybe possibly breaking into the back of your house uh, it also prevents you from seeing out that maybe something is going on, you know, on the street in front of your home. It takes those designs and says, you know, this bush is really beautiful, but it blocks your view and it also prohibits your light from cascading over your driveway to protect your vehicles at nighttime. So it goes in and it does a, a wholesale look at what your home's design is and, and not only the locks, the you know, the trees, the shrubbery, and the lights. It takes a whole well-rounded picture. It is a crucial part of what we do is trying to prevent crime. Thank you, Jimmy, so much for all the work you do and, and for the team. Coming up next, Special Olympics just celebrated a big milestone, and some LCO's deputies were along for the ride. That's in our Deputy on Duty segment. Stay tuned. This week's deputy on duty is Sergeant Mike Wallace as we highlight his passion for coaching in the Special Olympics. I really ran away from literally uh, coaching Special Olympics because I didn't think I had the temperament for it. 
For more than a decade, Sergeant Wallace has proved not only that he has the temperament for coaching, but he also believes it is a true calling. Gold medal goes to Michaela Wallace. I love athletics. I'm a little, I, I, I'm to a place where Special Olympics is my joy. It's what they, it's what we, we all have loved about sports and the best of the human condition and who we are as human beings and how we love each other. In Tallahassee during this year's torch run back in April, Sergeant Wallace joined hundreds of other law enforcement officers from around the state to raise money for nearly 60,000 Special Olympic athletes. So the torch run is our law enforcement's way of saying, we support you, we got you. Each year, the Flame of Hope is carried by thousands of officers on a 1,500-mile relay through Florida's 67 counties. Their goal is to change attitudes towards people with disabilities and to have law enforcement officers be champions of acceptance and inclusion. And so we literally we run about four miles from the Publix to, to the Capitol, and we've raised money for not only our local athletes, but Special Olympics in general, to be able to continue to run, um, to run such an awesome program uh, and including pe folks with intellectual disabilities. The event is a precursor to the Special Olympics Florida State Summer Games down in Orlando. We, we literally have athletes that may run um, an 800 meter race that's visually impaired. Or, or hearing impaired or any number of what we, you and I would call a disability. It's, it's not, the mindset isn't a disability. The, the mindset is, this is who I am and, and I'm going to do whatever I can do within my abilities. This year was especially important. Special Olympics Florida celebrated its 50th anniversary of supporting people with intellectual disabilities. And of course, Sergeant Wallace was right there to cheer on the athletes from Leon County. Two busloads of athletes from Leon County down to Orlando to state games. And not one quitter, not one person in the group, no matter what the, their sport was, whether it was soccer, bocce, uh, track and field, you name it, all of the all of the sports that you would see on a normal Olympics games was held in our state games. These events gave Sergeant Wallace and these athletes just a taste of what they can expect during this year's Special Olympics USA Games in front of a national audience. Sergeant Wallace has been chosen to coach for the Florida delegation's basketball team, and this year Florida is hosting that event in Orlando. I can't wait. If I mean the state games is electric, I just. I can't wait to experience, um, you know, that electricity. That I, I, I can only imagine um, just how special that's going to be. It is a commitment that is well worth it for these athletes, but one that is so easy for others to get involved in for future events. We we typically practice once a week, um, and whatever sport we have, we need tennis coaches. We need. Folks, and you don't have to already be a coach. We train you. We, we just need someone who has the desire to learn. And it, it takes an hour a week out of, your, out of your schedule that we train with, with the athletes. And with that information, Sergeant Wallace is challenging others to help these athletes get off the sidelines and into the game of life. I guarantee, I guarantee anyone that um, they will have the time of their life. It will not be time wasted uh, coaching these athletes in any, any of the given sports. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great experience and it's life changing. And that's why we are highlighting Sergeant Wallace and our amazing Special Olympic athletes and volunteers in our deputy on duty. To learn more about volunteering with Special Olympics, visit specialolympicsflorida.org. I'm Angela Green for Leon County Today. Welcome back to Leon County Today and Sheriff, uh, when we say all in, it is not just the enforcement side. We as a sheriff's office so involved in so many different aspects of our community and Special Olympics, this is just an awesome one. Oh, I tell you, I am so proud of uh, the members of our Leon County Sheriff's Office family. As you said, we're engaged in every aspect of our community 
and Special Olympics. Uh, I've been engaged with Special Olympics for probably 30 years. Yeah. Uh, had the opportunity to go to the, the Olympics uh, in Orlando when they hold them there for the state. And uh, it is something to behold. There's not a dry eye in the place. Mm -hmm. uh, thousands of people there and these kids uh, giving their I mean, given everything they got yeah. in terms of uh, their commitment to the sport they're engaged in. And I, again, I want to thank our citizens of Leon County for giving our deputies the opportunity to go down there and participate mm -hmm. and certainly thank our deputies that go out each and every year uh, dedicated to this great cause in our community. Yeah, so much heart those athletes have. I just love seeing them perform. And I have the distinct pleasure of working with our crime prevention team here at the Sheriff's Office. You, Jimmy Goodman is a prime example of how amazing that team is. Oh, I tell you, uh, he and I have a, uh, uh, an affection for each other. We, we greet each other just about every day and he says, I love you, man. I, yeah. tell him, I love you, man, too. And, and Jimmy's just an outstanding person. Uh, really proud of uh, him and and I'm just proud to be a, a member of this Leon County Sheriff's Office family. Absolutely. Great family. All right, so those neighborhood crime watches, we need everybody out there to be all in. All in indeed. We want to thank you all for joining us for another episode. We'll see you back here next week.